Hello and welcome to Marvel Cinematic University. I'm your professor Alex and with me as always is my number one pupil, Jake. Number one pupil and number one in your heart. Mm, that's definitely not the truth. Heart you're me. like kind of lucky if you're even close, to be honest. It's all right. I won't cry myself to sleep or anything. It's like, even if it was an arc reactor, I don't even know if you would like register on the arc reactor. Oh, today we're talking about Fury's big week. He had a big week. It's quite the week for him. Um, was... Probably called Fury's big week due to his schedule. He talked about that a lot. That his schedule was busy or that it was a big schedule. Busy. <laughs> <laughs> do you think Um. do you think he has like a giant schedule book? And that's his big week. Yes. And it just says big week on it. It's leather bound on a bookcase made out of mahogany. Fury's big week. He was in one movie and then he went to another movie and then he went to another movie and then he went to another movie and then an epilogue to another movie. Yeah. And it kind of weaved in and out of all the movies almost. Yeah. Fury was everywhere. He had his hands in every single movie. Yes, yes, yes. Was well, uh, Black Widow like in the Hulk? No, nope, she. Else? Nope, she was just hiding there in the background. Kind of in the background. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, you don't see her in the movie, but she's there now. We know she's there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fairy's big week. Uh, was Marvel was a Marvel distributed comic, so it did not have a budget nor a box office. No, no way, really. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, right? That's crazy. It is a four part comic series. Also included in that is a prologue and an epilogue. It takes place between May 29th and June 4th of 2011. Otherwise known as one week. One week. And it was written by Chris Yost and Eric Pearson. The comic uh, consists of The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, and Captain America, the first Avenger, as well as serves as a prologue to Marvel's the Avengers Assemble, mm -hmm. which is why we're talking about okay. it this week. Yeah. And I get uh, to watch a movie next week instead of read. I'll give you your homework at the end of class. It's not reading, though. Yeah, yeah. Me here. Good. I, I like keeping you on your tootsies. Tootsies are on. <laughs> All right, Jake. Well, I don't think I have much else to say about Inferior's big week. So why don't you go ahead and give us your overview of Fury's big week? I recognize the council has made a decision, but given that it's a stupid ass decision, I've elected to ignore it. Yeah, I mean, it was those movies aforementioned. Uh, and I think it uh, it. Fury's Big Week, uh, the comics, they put a nice little bow on top of all the movies there. It I did. think it tied the movies together quite nicely, gave you some some info about what's happening in the background. Um, some, you know, explains, you know, kind of how Black Widow and Archer, no, Hawkeye. Archer. <laughs> Mr. Archer. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Archer, Archer. sir. Mr. Hawkeye Archer is, uh, you know, kind of what they're doing this whole time. They're not mm -hmm. just kind of sitting at home playing the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare. You know, they're actually out in the field doing work in business for S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, they're doing their jobs. They're doing their nine to fives. Yeah, and uh, Nick Fury does not like taking orders apart from what he wants to do. No surprise yeah. there, really. Um, the World Safety Council, kind of led by a bunch of rubes. I think you mean World Security Council, but I'll yeah. give it to you. Same thing, it's, you know, WSC. Um, WSC doesn't, not very smart. Seems like they're kind of greedy trying to get their hands on that old Tesseract object. Well, they and, want they want Fury to test the Tesseract and see what it has in store. Because it, um, as Howard found out and Hydra found out back in World War II, it creates energy and is able to uh, basically run a city. And that's kind of well, we talked about this, I think, two weeks ago or whenever we did. Or it might have been last week when we did Captain America. It's theorized that the Tesseract 
is what helped Howard discover the element to make the arc reactor. Oh, that makes sense. I'll write that in my notes here. <laughs> and if you like notice, the color of the Tesseract is very similar to the arc reactor color. Uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, before I've taken your illustrious class here, um, I at one point did think the arc reactor included the Tesseract. Um, didn't know what an arc reactor was. Now I know, I think. Um, what is an arc reactor? Don't know. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Fury, the WSC is pretty mad at Fury at the end there. And they're like, uh, you know, you haven't done anything. We're going to replace you. Oh, this is after he, uh, yells at old, uh, army guy from Hulk there. General Ross. I think he yells at General Ross later. No. Because, uh, so he yells at the Security Council first, and then he has his week, and then he yells at the Security Council again at the end of the week. Yeah, but in between that, he yells at General Ross for hacking the shield. Yeah. Or getting access to the shield thing. And then uh, they have it out, yell. General Ross is kind of a, you know, dummy, if you will. Um, he, I get this sense that he wants, uh, Jesus Christ, my fucking brain's not working right. Uh, Does it ever? No. That's why you're taking this class. Super bad tonight, dude. <laughs> uh, Nick, he wants Nick Fury's job is the sense I'm getting from him. From, oh, from General Ross, yeah, yeah. From General Ross, yeah. Yeah. Um. You know, he's kind of trying to upstage him and replace him, get him in trouble with the WSC. And, well, yeah, uh, General Ross likes power. Big power guy. Power bottom. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so. But after, you know, they have their little uh, scuffle, their little argument, uh, you know, they say some words to each other. Mm hmm. Um. Nick Fury then calls the WSC, who's mad at him for not doing his Tesseract homework. And he he does some fantastic BSing. By, uh, which, you know, I'd say it's pretty BSing, uh, pretty much BSing. And he's like, look, I did all these things which help us with the Tesseract. And they're yeah. like, I guess. And they, they let him stay on as the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. there. Fury's not a spring chicken. He's not. He's no spring chicken. Um, Black Widow's there, and he's like, hey, you're my uh, lucky charm, you know? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not much else to say there. I mean, we've already gone through all the movies. Yeah, well, I mean, we could talk about some of the other, like, behind-the-scenes things, like... Bill Coulson um, was all over the place, but... Yeah, so I mean, what this kind of ties together is so day one, he's basically in a scuffle with the security console because they want him to they want him to work on the Tesseract, cancel every other project. The Tesseract, what's going to save us? I'm trying to think Marvel continuity. They've had the Tesseract in their possession since the 90s at this point, so it's not really stated why now it's a big deal. Um, but it is a big deal now. Um, you know, WSC leaders, they just, they just don't know what they're talking about. Oh, we're going to talk a lot about them next or uh, in a couple weeks. And then also when we talk about Captain America, Winter Soldier. Bunch of stooges. <laughs> but yeah, so he's, he has this scuffle at the same time. He also finds out that Tony Stark is essentially dying of, Pal palladium palladium is it palladium Idiot. or pal yeah wait what did you say palladium yeah that poisoning <laughs> um in his bloodstream and basically causing his health to deteriorate which we see in iron man 2 um so he learns this send we find out he sends natasha to go keep an eye on him at the same time, he's dealing with people on a rescue mission for Captain America. Essentially, he has people out in the Arctic. the Arctic, yeah, where, yeah, Norway, wherever they are, looking for 
uh, the down ship from Captain America, which they did find one of the small ships that was flying out or something. Oh, yeah, it was like one of the Chicago ships. Yeah, they found that ship, and so they were going to continue looking, and that's when the... That's when the WSC called. We're like, yeah. no, no, no more. Yeah, so that's day one, pretty much. Um, also, I think at this point, Coulson is... Loke er, is uh, tracking some weather in New Mexico. He's like at yeah. Sh- Shield headquarters, and he's like, "Hey, sir, uh, New Mexico is crazy right now." And uh, Nick Fury's like, "Why would I care about the weather in New Mexico?" Exactly. No one's cared about that state since the forties. Is that true? Did, did people care about New Mexico in the forties? Eighteen forties, when it became a state. When it became a state. <laughs> anyway, so then the second day. Uh, or no, sorry. The first day that night, he gets a call from Natasha that basically Rhodey is fighting Iron Man, which we see in Iron Man Two, and he leaves with a war machine armor. So Fury tells her, to st- "Did not know what that he left with the war machine armor." We went over this when we talked about Iron Man Two. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about the guy from Thor. The uh, alien that came down. The, oh, the uh, destroyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, Coulson leaves with and turns that into a weapon. Yeah, Which that'll be. I don't think we ever see again. Okay, you you think that? Okay, yeah, it'll have it'll have a few appearances in our future. In any of the movies. In one movie. Are you talking about the destroyer itself or the weapon that yeah, yeah. Coulson made? The weapon. The yeah. destroyer. I was talking about the destroyer. Right, but Coulson takes the destroyer tech and turns it into a gun. Oh, okay. And we do see that again. Is that the gun that Rocket Raccoon has? No. It's a it's a Coulson gun. He made yeah. it, he uses it. We'll talk about it ne- uh, in two weeks. Okay. And you'll go, Oh! oh! Um, so yeah, back to, um, Rhodey anyway, Rhodey goes off with the war machine armor, uh, Fury tells Natasha to stay put and he goes and meets her in the morning and meets Tony in a donut. We know this, how this scene plays out. Um, he thinks he can, you know, slow Tony's death. So he gives him the injection. We see that in Iron Man 2. And... At this point, Tony starts his crap in his uh, house where he's building the new element. Coulson is like, hey, boss, I got to go to New Mexico. So Fury's like, all right, kid, go to New Mexico. And then he also calls uh, Hawkeye and tells Hawkeye to get his ass to New Mexico. We see the scene where Hammer and Iron Man fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after this, after that fight, Natasha sent to... The university where Hulk is about to fight. Uh, Hulk fights at the same time that Coulson gets to New Mexico. Coulson also has a little tussle in New Me- on his way to New Mexico, which we'll talk about next week. Um, little tussly tussle. Gets into a little tussly tussle. And then Black Widow gets to the university. Hulk goes crazy. She sees Hulk go crazy. She also sees Emil be a super soldier. Tells mm-hmm. Fury about the super soldier serum. Uh, Fury goes to General Ross, yells at General Ross and tells him to stop the super soldier project. And General Ross says, no, I'm going to be the new guy from Captain America 1 who made the super soldier serum thing. But it's like, I got to get to Mr. Green. And then the next scene, she's like with Mr. Blue. Mr. Blue's like flirting with her. And is like, you're you need to like, you don't need to be a shield little puppet shield puppet lady. You need to be your Russian self. And she's like, you're coming to S.H.I.E.L.D. prison and then takes him to S.H.I.E.L.D. prison. Yeah, yeah. He was like flirting with her, though. And then she shot him. And she's like, ah, she flirted back. She's like, I just need one thing from you. And then she's like, bang, in the leg, shot, come to prison. I guess that's true. (laughs) Um, This is basically the setup for him becoming the leader that will has never paid off until maybe three years from now. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So that happens. There's another thing too with Coulson. Maybe no, 
Oh no, then Tony goes to his debriefing with Samuel L. Jackson Fury that we see in Iron Man 2. This is when he becomes a consultant. That'll play into something we'll talk about next week. And then Coulson has his whole Thor adventure, takes the Thor stuff, the Thor weapon. Uh, Black Widow lady saw the fight in Harlem between Abomination. And then, yeah, then he goes back to the, what did you call it, the WSC? Yeah, WSC. And then does the whole thing that you said. And that's Fury's big week. It's a big week for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Going on, you think it would have made bigger news. Um, you know, big green monster smashing around New York with uh, another monster. And then, uh, you know, big well, alien battleship coming out of the sky, landing and walking around, blowing the shit out of New Mexico town. And Well, here's the thing, right? So, sure, this was like newsworthy in New York for a year. But then the year after, aliens invaded New York. Yeah, that was just like the next. <laughs> big... Huh? That was just the next big thing. Yeah, yeah. It was a week later. Alien, or a year later, aliens are here. Like, oh, yep. cool. Who cares about this monster fight? Yeah, Thanos's uh, minions. Thanos's minions, which we'll talk about in two weeks. Two whole weeks. Two whole weeks. Um. I don't really have much in the way of like, like Easter eggs and fun facts that's like for this Ultron, one. Ultron, right? No, Ultron is like the second Avengers. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So that's a while from now. No, that's Loki. Loki is the first Avengers. Oh, oh, you're right, you're right. I know I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> now give me uh, some fun facts and Easter eggs. I really don't have much. For fun facts, all I really got for you is the song that Hawkeye listens to as he drives to New Mexico is Hit Me With Your Best Shot by Pat Benatar. And then for it being all connected, I mean, other than the obvious connection, um, (laughs) there is another time that Fury's Big Week will be brought up. And this is when we talk about What If. When we get into the multiverse stuff, talk about the show What If. One of the episodes is focused on this week, and it basically shows the events of this week again. But if somebody was killing all the Avengers, so like it shows the it shows basically the order of events, canonizing the comic. People for a while weren't sure if the comic was canonized. Basically, the what if canonized it by making it the exact same week. And but like I said, because it's what if it was what if somebody was killing all the Avengers. So it canonized the uh, Fury's Big Week comic. Yeah, it basically like confirmed that that actually happens in the MCU. It all actually takes place in a week. Because uh, people were just like not sure if the comic was an aside or not. Just kind of like how people right now are not sure if Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. exists in the same universe or not or whatever. One would think it does. It's, it mo- I think it does. I personally think it's canon. Um, it might be slightly altered. It might be a different multiverse that's not too different from ours, but I don't think it's fully not canon. All right. And then the second connection I have for you for uh, Fury's Big Week, uh, we already kind of talked about it. The comic sets up the yet to be paid off Samuel Stern, Mr. Blue Tease um, of him becoming the leader. And then we also learn that Natasha has, in fact, seen the Hulk in action prior to the Avengers movie, which is probably why she's so fucking attracted to him in Agent or in uh, uh, Age of Ultron, which I still can't excuse. That's so stupid. Why did this relationship have to be a thing? But that's pretty much all that I have for connections and Easter eggs. Um, Jake, I have some good news for you. No quiz. No quiz today. You're you're free of all quizzes today because this is all just rehashing and connecting things that we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. It's a nice connect the dots project. Yeah. Um, this was basically the first thing too to come out and be the thing that like unites the MCU. This is the first thing that we see where it's all these heroes in one place. 
before the we see the Avengers. Yeah, it, it, like I said, it puts a nice bow on the, those four movies there. Yeah, it's basically like a, a phase one roundup. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice little recap. And like I said, it, it basically sets up the Avengers. It shows like how we get to the first seed, why Fury's working on the Tesseract with Hawkeye, um, why the WSC is in charge of all this. Uh, we kind of get that in from this comic book, which you wouldn't get if you just watched the movie. Th- that's the nice thing about these tie-ins, and I know you you joked about it, but with Agents of Shield, <laughs> you see things that connect, com- like explain something that you wouldn't get if you just watched the movies. And people have the gall to say it's not in the same universe. I know, right? Wait till we get to season whatever. I think it's season two that connects with. Uh, Age of Ultron, um, there's a big connection that the movies don't even touch on. Oh. Uh, but we'll get there. That's that's a little feature teaser for you to get you excited for watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, it's like unwrapping the big Christmas present on Christmas. Yeah, except it's not Christmas. It's only November. I shouldn't date the podcast because this will probably actually come out around Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> We should record next week with Santa Claus hats on just to be safe. <laughs> Plot twist, it'll be like February. <laughs> Plot twist, it's July. <laughs> well, oh, no. We could, I was going to say, we could do a Christmas special and talk about the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special when it comes out, but that wouldn't make any sense because that's so no. far in the future. Yeah. Um, no, maybe we'll save that for next Christmas. We'll probably be closer. <laughs> we should do uh, a... Uh, you know, when it comes time to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm just saying maybe we do a watch along pod. Smash that we like button if you want to see a watch along pod of Guardians of the Galaxy and just watch me drink 1200 iced teas. We should. We should do supplementary content for that. That'd be, oh my God. Just, uh, we, we turn some cameras on, we turn a mic on, we turn the film on, we open a beer. And before we know it, we're halfway through the movie and I'm knocked out. Oh, boy. Well, your homework for next week is to watch three of the Marvel one shot shorts. You're going to be watching The Consultant, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to Thor's Hammer, and Agent Carter. Okay. Where would one find those if one was to watch them? Uh, not a sponsor, Disney Plus. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. But they but could they be wanna... if they, like, hit us up. I won't any. I won't make any more mid jokes if they sponsor us. I promise. You heard it here first. He promised. We'll have to explain some other things from previous streams, but... <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. We'll delete all that. <laughs> um... But I think, uh, I mean, actually, sorry, I forgot to open it up. You, uh, did you have any questions, any student questions? Not really. All right. Um, I kind of ask my questions as we go, you know? I know, and I still ask you at the end if you have any questions. You gotta ask, otherwise it's just irresponsible. It satisfies my need to be a teacher. Yes, yes, your deep, dark, deep, dark desire to be a t- teacher. Yeah, it's deep and dark. It's it's dark to want to be a teacher. What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, I, I don't tell no one. But I want to be a teacher. No, no son no. of mine will be a teacher. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's the bell. I can hear it. Teachers here. Uh, that means class is over. Jacob, you are dismissed. Make sure you do your homework for next week. Uh, for this week, I've been your professor, Alex. This has been stupid people, Jake. And we'll see you every Thursday on YouTube and everywhere you can find podcasts. That's right.